All right, guys. Um, so we took a control board off of a dryer. Right here is a, uh, a main computer board for a dryer. I have it up on the computer. I'm not gonna actually talk about like how do we repair a dryer. I'm gonna talk about more like when you're looking at a computer board like this on a machine, what are we looking at? You know, what, what does it do? And then if I had to test some of these things, what can I test and how can I test them, okay? So here we have a, a, a microwave control board. This is the same thing that, you know, when you want to cook your microwave popcorn or whatever, this is what you use. This is a touch panel or what we call a UI, user interface. So if you hear that, that terminology, UI, that's your buttons that you press and everything that communicate here to the main control board and tell the control board how long it, you want it to run, what you want it to do, and everything else. And on this board, we have some relays also. So let's first talk about... What is a relay? What What is a relay? Anybody know what parts make up a relay? It's two parts. The uh, control board. Not the control board itself. There are relays on the control board, but like on a compressor, we can just put a relay on the compressor to help that compressor start. Mm -hmm. um, so what is actually just the relay itself? They're also used on oven control boards, washer, dryer, dishwasher, anything has a control board. And we want to turn something on and off. One of the main ones that we use are relays. Now relays have two parts. They have a switch that's either open or closed. And then they have a magnetic coil, which is what this symbol is. So this is the coil and this is the switch which is open here. So what happens is if I put power to the magnetic coil on the relay, the switch is going to close. And one thing about relays is like, okay, well, first of all, I have to have a way to control, let's say a motor. I want to turn on the motor on the dryer, okay? I have to have a switch that can handle the electrical current going through it in order for that motor to run or the heating element on a dryer. Most computer boards like this, they have this little yellow thing here. This is called a transformer. So they usually run off of 110 volts the board, whether it's a washer, dryer, whatever. Dryers have 240, stoves have 240, but we only put 120 volts to this control board. That transformer will take that voltage and step the voltage down. One is for the display, like the LED lights you see when you're pressing buttons on the controls. But the other one is for the operating circuitry on this board. Because one of the things that this relay does is the relay has a coil that runs off of, um, let me see if they give me the voltage on there, 12 volts DC. I'm first gonna put it on the co camera. Can you see it on the camera there? Uh, if you look right here, it says 12 volts DC. Can you see that right there, the 12 volts? Yes. Can you see right there above my finger, 12 volts? Yeah. yeah. Can you see the 12 volts right there? Yeah. Now, if we look a little bit lower, it says 240. Mm -hmm. You see where it says 240 on there also? You see 240? Yes. Okay, so that 12 volts, and let me just put it so we can see it on the board because I told a couple guys that couldn't make it, they can see us. That 240 AC and that 12 volts, those two are the switch voltage and the coil voltage. So the coil, the magnetic coil, um, is running off 12 volts DC. So the computer board, let's just say this is the computer here, the computer board, like the chip and everything, is, is sending voltage to here and telling the motor or the heater or another component to come on. And when the board sends power to the coil, the switch does not have to be the same electrical power than the coil. So we can have a 12-volt coil activate a 120-volt motor or 240-volt heating element. 
and line one would come in here and go to the switch and this would go let's say to the heating element or the motor so we can have a 12 volt circuit control this there's some examples where you guys might have them at your home if you have a doorbell at your house you know where someone goes and presses that little lighted button in your front door and your do doorbell rings well the button you're pressing is low voltage it's not dc it's ac but they drop it down to 12 or 24 volts and when you press the button, that button is a switch closing and it completes a circuit to the actual magnetic coil that hits the bell. There's a little plunger that it's like the same as that, that coil pulls down on it and then spring pops back up and, and rings the bell. So when you're pressing a button, you're using a low voltage circuit to control something that's high voltage. So that's what the coils are and the relays. Now, different boards have different types of relays. And one thing, again, let me just put it here, is that these boxes here are relays on the board. Okay, so if you look at this box, this box, and some of these other boxes, those are relays. The difference is, if you notice, this one has a place for wires to connect externally, where this one don't have a place to connect wires. And this one don't have a place to connect wires. So if we look at it, this one we can connect wires to, but there's no place here to connect wires. Now, maybe those two wires right there in that terminal, but this one here has no place for you to connect any wires. That's going to run to this plug right here on, 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 the, on the board. Okay, so let's take a look at the diagram for here, and then also we're going to compare some of the similarities to this microwave board and, and show you how... If you can understand how some of these parts work when it comes to troubleshooting and something's not working, then you would say, okay, this is how I know whether the board's good or bad. So if we look at this page here, here we have the same board that I just showed you, the board on there. You got a relay here, a relay here, a relay there, and you've got some external plugs here for the harness of the machine to come to. And we'll, we'll break that down in a minute on the diagram. But notice the relays are different sizes. Look at this black relay here and how big that one is. But look at the blue one. It's not as big. And this one is even smaller here. What do you think is the difference? Is why, why, why don't they just put three of the same relays on the board? Why would we have three different relays? Any idea? It could be different kinds of relays. They're all pretty much the same kind of relay. The difference is the parts that they are controlling. The bigger the relay is, the more money it's going to cost than one of these smaller ones. But one of the differences is the amperage or the electricity that, that the switch contact can handle. Like, like a microwave door switch, they fail a lot. Why do they fail? If you look at some of these components on the door switches, you'll see, um, one second, uh, do you remember where those boards are for the oven? No, I brought them back. Let me pause this just for a second. So let me get it here too. If you guys can see this relay, and I'm going to bring it to you close, look at the plastic there starting to melt around the terminal. Can you, can you see how it's like melting around the, around the wire terminal? And the others don't have that, do they? Yes. You see how shiny they are here and how melted that is? How melted that is and how shiny that is on the bottom? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, this plastic melting here, and, th and these are the shiny ones. So I don't know if you got it on the camera. But this one here melting here is an indication of electrical amperage being drawn. And when you draw electrical current, it creates heat. Mm -hmm. This is the one that controls the microwave in that, that combi wall oven. So the microwave got used a lot, but the relays over a period of time will fail because the amperage. I have a feeling that this relay for the microwave is undersized for the microwave if the plastic is melting like that. Now, the only other thing that will cause like this plastic to melt like this would be not necessarily that the relay is the problem. Sometimes the, the connectors, if you ever had like a wire you connected was really loose, if it's not tight, it also gets hot 
where it's connected. So it could be touching the metal, but if it don't have a good, strong connection, we're gonna have a problem with this, with this relay. So this is evidence that it might be undersized. So the reason why we have different size relays is because they're controlling different components in the dryer or whatever appliance it is. If we look at this microwave board here, we have one big relay and then smaller relays. So this big relay is the same relay that's used for cooking the magnetron. This dryer, I'm gonna tell you just by looking at it that this big relay is for what part in the dryer? Which part uses the most electrical current? Motor. No. Mm. Heating the heating element. Why the heating element, not the motor? Because the motor is, you know, it's it's big. It's got to drive the drum and push the air and everything. But what the element is how much voltage? 240. The motor is only 120. So if we double the voltage, we're also going to increase the amperage draw. So that's why we have such a big relay on here. Okay. So let's take a look at the diagram and break down some of these things. So this is the machine control. We have heater relay one, heater relay two. So this may or may not have two relays on it for the heating element. We'll get to that in just a minute. And then where's the motor? The motor's here, right? Is this the drive motor mm -hmm. right here? Yeah. This circle right here? And then it goes to the board right here, and line one power comes in here. So somehow, there's a switch on the board that's going to send power coming in to the motor. It's not drawn there, is it? You don't know that. So if, you, if you're not familiar with the board, you wouldn't know that this relay is the motor control relay or the, the heating element relay. Okay, so how would you find out what controls the motor? Well, we have to look at the wires, P91, P92. We're gonna look for a plug, and I don't know if, if it's visible on this one. Let's just see if it's visible here. It's so small, I can't even see it in my eyes. But on that one relay here, let me see here. This big relay right here is so I'm trying to find it. I'm trying to find the plug. That's R37, R38. I'm looking for P9. I can't read it on this board. I can't read it on the board, but what we want to look at, and let's just move this one up here for a second. How many plugs, let me erase this, how many plugs are on this board? Not wires. How many plugs can you plug onto that board? One, two, three, four. Okay, wait a minute. Where, where are they? Is this a plug would go here? Isn't that a connector? A plug would go here, right, with wires yeah. on it. Would a plug go here? Mm -hmm. Is it a different plug than this one? Different. Yes. Uh, and then two wires go on here. And then we have some smaller plugs over here. So one of the things we want to look at, if you notice, this board is almost separated where it's got all these big relays on one end and then they have very little stuff on the other end here. This is more lower voltage. What you're going to find connected to here are sensors and controls and other things. But over here are going to be our larger, bigger components that are going to draw more amperage. So when they build some of these boards, usually they'll separate the components on the board. But if we look at this plug here, this is an important thing to look at. There we go. We want to look at the plugs and the numbers after it. The motor itself if we look at it, goes here to P91. How many other P9s do you see on there besides that one I just underlined? How many other places do you see P9?
There's only one other P9 there. It's right here. P9. This is P8, 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 P8. This one here not being used, P8, P13, P14, and P2. So each one of those P's represents a plug. So we have one plug here with two wires, another plug here with a three or four wires, and then we have this one that has six wires on it. We have another one here with five wires, another one with two wires. How many wires does P9 have? How many wires did I highlight? Only two, right? Yeah. So that plug can only be this one with two terminals on it, or this one down here with two terminals on it. Mm -hmm. And didn't I say like this one's mostly low voltage, so the motor wouldn't come in over here. The motor's gotta be on this side. So the motor would be those two wires right there. Can't see it? On that terminal right there. Okay, and then this one here has got five wires, right? So let's look at, the, find a plug here that only has five wires on it. So we're looking for a P something, one, two, three, four, five, but the same number, like P14 or whatever, has five different wires underneath, underneath that number. P02? Uh, P2? Yeah, P02. You're saying P, right? P2? Yeah, P02 or P02. Or Where are you seeing that? TNF, TNF, maybe. TNF, that was PO, is POS. Is it These? P14. Yes. This is P23, P22, P21. Well, P14. But do you see any other P2s? No, that's a three wire plug, right? Yeah, well, there's a five. So you'd have to look for a three wire plug, which will probably be this small one here. P14. Okay, we'll check P14. Can you see this one here on the... So this one here only has three wires on it. That's probably P2. Now, if we look at P14, so P14, 4, 5, 3, 6, 2, 1. That's it, right? No more P14s? So that one right here has five wires, six wires. So that's not that plug that has six. But you're saying, yeah, but five and four are not being used, are they? Are five and four being used on that plug right here? No, five, four, no. on, on number four, number five, on plug, plug 14, is it being used? Mm -hmm. No, but that is a six pin because it has a number six here, right? Well, let's take a look at this for a second. I'm just gonna hold this up here. So we got this plug here, this plug, this one, and then we have these two plugs over here on the board. Which one of those has six places for wires to connect to? The white one. The white one? Yeah. Which one? The blue one on top. This one on top. Mm -hmm. This one has six places to connect wires, right? So this is what? That, the P14. P14. Now, let's see if I can look at it. Remember, I told you P2 had the had the had the three wires. Now, if we can look at this closely, right here on this plug, right here. If we can look right there, can you see it in the screen? It says P2 right there by my thumb. Can you see it? It's very hard to see. It's right there. Can you see the P2? Yes. Okay, can you see it there? Mm -hmm. You saw it on the camera? Mm -hmm. You see it right there, like on the board? Mm -hmm. Printed P2? Mm -hmm. That's P2. So this one's P14. I can't really see the P14 directly on it. Oh, yeah, I do. That P14 is here. See it? P14? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You guys see it there? So that's the six pin one. So we still haven't found the one with two wires, P9. So I'm almost positive this one has to be P9, but I can't find the P9 printed on the board. Oh, wait a minute. 
Let's look at this plug again, the two wire one that I was showing earlier. What does it say right there in the corner? What does it say P right? P9. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's it. It's P9. 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 Yeah. So that, oops. <laughs> Don't worry, everybody watching the video will see you. Um, so P9 is what? Power coming in. Power coming in from the plug here and power going to the motor. That's what those two wires are. How can I use this for troubleshooting or to my advantage? This is how relays work. How do I, how do I use this? Let's just say, customer calls you out and says, my dryer lights up. I press start and nothing happens. Well, door switch could be bad. Belt switch could be, the door switch here could be bad. The belt switch could be bad. The motor could be bad. Thermal fuse could be bad. The board can be bad, right? Mm -hmm. But you want to you wanna see the unit run. Now that I identified P92 and P91, one of the other things we can do to confirm, if I couldn't see on the board that P9, which most of them are all printed, so it should be there, what can I do to prove that that plug right here are these two wires? What can I do to prove that the plug on the board are those two wires? Following the line, I'm tracking the, the line, the color of the... The colors of the wires going to that plug. Mm -hmm. So if I look at this plug on the board, and you can look at it on the machine when we put it back, one of the wires is black and the other one is light blue. So if I look at that and I say, well, that's the only two wire plug it is, that's gotta be it, but I'm not sure. I look at the diagram and says, well, that plug not only has two wires, but that plug has a black and a blue. So one of these wires is black and one of these wires is blue. But let's say the dryer didn't work. If that relay right here, the one I pointed out, which is the motor relay, is bad, will the dryer run? No. No. So what can I do to prove whether my problem is my board or not? Well, I got a black wire and a light blue wire here, right? Voltage test? Well, oh, wait, I can do a voltage test, but watch this. I got the black line one coming in. There's a switch here. There's a relay on the board, but there's a switch there that's not closed, sending power to the motor. That's what the board relay does. When we energize it, it closes that switch and power goes to the motor. So if I identify those two wires as these two wires, and I'm confident those are two wires, could I take a piece of wire and just jump it here and see if the motor runs? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You could jump the relay out mm -hmm. and bypass the board to see if the motor runs. Now the problem is there's no control. Like when the dryer is done with the cycle, there's no way to stop the motor if you jump it out. The motor is always going to be running. Now if you open the door, the motor will stop, right? I open the door, the motor will stop, but I can't control it on its own. And that's what the board and the relay does. And the board's processor here, this is a processor right here, like a regular computer processor. It times out, it says it's time to dry. So uh, these two are what relay? The uh, heat number. Okay, but where is it on the diagram? Those two? How many problems is it? There's only two terminals on the relay itself. Just the wires are right on the relay. They're not a separate plug. And this relay is different from the others where the wires from the machine go right to the relay and not to a, a plug with a, with a bunch of wires. It's gonna be one of these two. I think we only have a single heater, okay? So that power will come in and either goes to this one here or power will come into this one and go to this one here but we don't have both, I don't think, okay? But if we look, when power comes into this here, this relay, it's nothing but a switch. And then going out to the heater here, it's just a switch, just like the motor one. There's a coil here that closes that switch and turns the heater on. Could we jump this out 
and see if the heater works? Mm -hmm. Yes and no. Why? No, if I jump this, it'll send power to my heater, but will my heater work? No. Why not? Because it's not sending the signal to the heater. Well, if I connect this switch, these two wires with a jumper, these two wires right here, I take a piece of wire and stick it in here and here with the wires on it, I'm no longer using the switch and the relay. My piece of wire is acting like the switch. Mm -hmm. But why isn't the heater going to come up? Because if we look at this circuit, this thermostat's closed right now. Where do we run into? It's a different switch. A switch on the motor. Mm -hmm. And when does that switch close and make contact? Mm -hmm. When the motor's running. Mm -hmm. So if I just jump these two and stand there and wait for the heater to come on, nothing's going to happen. I have to actually start the dryer. Once the motor starts rotating, this switch goes here and this switch will close. Now the heater will complete the circuit and the heater will work. But if we don't close that switch, the heater won't come up. So relays on the board, we can check these with the external wires, but on this plug here, this has one, two, three, four, five pins. We have to look for something with just five wires. And let's see, P82, P84, P83, P81, that's four wires. And is there a P85? Nope, we're only using four of the five. Oh, there is a P85 right here, but we're not using it. And there's no more P8. So P81, P83, P84, P82. Now, what does that mean, P81, P82? What does that, what does that mean? Like if I told you, hey, I need you to go check this out on the board. I want you to check P81 and P83. What does that mean? You're going to look at me and say, what the heck are you talking about? Well, the P8 is telling me which one of the plugs we're going to go to. And I showed you P9 and some of the other plugs on there. The second number, dash 1, dash 2, or dash 3, on these boards, let me see if I can find it. Usually number one is marked on the board. Let me see something here. I think it's right down here. Let me see. And the lighting here is no good. You're not going to be able to see it in the camera. But one of these pins will have a number one. On all of them, they should have a number one identifying that one pin as the number one pin. So, for example, if that's the number one pin, the next one will be two, three, four, five. So if I'm telling you to check pin nine two and pin nine one, and the diagram said that this is pin nine one, I would check this one and this one for one and two. So the extra numbers mean which pin on the board you're going to connect it to. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So if you look at these external relays, now, I'm going to say, you really have to know what you're testing on here. I don't want you guys just to start putting your meters on the board like that. But like this relay here and this relay here where the wire terminals are external, power doesn't go through this relay to feed the board. Power comes in here, goes through the switch, goes right back out. It really doesn't do anything on the board in these terminals. That's why we're able to jump it. But the other thing is, is I can put my own meter on those two terminals without the wires and run the dryer and check to see if that switch closes for ohms. Because if we go back to this relay here, if I put my meter here and here, but I take these wires off, so there's no wires, I'm just touching the two terminals. Mm -hmm. I can still have the coil on the board close the switch. When I put 12 volts here, there's no power here. So I can own that switch out. And the same thing with this microwave board. This microwave board, this relay right here is the relay that tells the magnetron to come on and cook. Okay? I can put an ohm meter on these two terminals and press start on the microwave and see if that switch closes. The opposite, or the other thing I could do, is I could also put a jumper from these two and see if the magnetron comes on. I can test the microwave to see if I have microwaves 
to make sure, like, let's say I think that that relay is bad and the microwave is not working. And say, well, ma'am, what you need is this control board here. But you don't want to order a board and, and not feel confident that your diagnosis is right. So if you jumped it out and the microwave started to heat, then you know that's the problem. Now, with this board here, this board here, on, on his microwave, this combo, this switch is the one that turns on the magnetron. But if this switch does not close, the microwave don't work. And when we jump it out, the microwave works. So when you jump out these two terminals and the microwave works, just like this one here, oops, if I jump this and the motor runs, well, then what does that tell me about the thermal fuse, the belt switch, the door switch, and all those switches if the motor's running? What does that tell me? I'll repeat it. If I jump out the board and the motor runs, what does that mean about this fuse, this switch, and that switch? What does that mean? That everything's good. They all have to be good. Because if any one of them were bad, the motor yeah. would never run. Mm -hmm. So if I jump out the switch and bypass the switch on the board and everything else works, I know the motor's good. I know the belt switch is good. I know the door switch is good. So now I can be confident in ordering the board and changing the board and know that I've fixed the problem. Does that make sense? Yes. So you guys understand some of the things that we're looking for on the board? So when you're working on these machines in the shop and you're taking them apart, you're putting them back together, one of the things you gotta do is you got to identify each component on the diagram and test each component. But a lot of times when you have a computer board, you'd like to be able to test some components from the board. Let's look at this board here for the, the one that we have here on the screen. Watch this. If the motor wasn't working on this dryer, this is the motor right here. Can I ohm out the motor and the circuit for the motor to see if that whole circuit is good from the control board. Is there a place on the board I could put my two meter leads and test the motor and the motor circuit? Where on the board would you do that? On the uh, relay for the uh, motor? Yes. Well, the relay for the motor is powered in and going out. So yes, one terminal on the relay, this one here where the light blue wire is, is one of the two but not this black one, because then if I go on that, I'm just checking the relay. What I want to check is I want to check the motor. Sorry, let me uh, I've done the screen by mistake here. I want to check this motor from the board. So if I put a meter lead here, that'll get me to the motor, but how do I, where do I put my other meter lead to check that motor? Where on the board would I do it? I want to check. I got two meter leads. I want to put them on the board and I want to check that motor. Where do I do it, Gene? Where do I check the motor from the board? I want to check this motor from this board. I put one meter lead here. Where do I put my other meter lead? On the board. Where? On the board. The, the, I mean, P84? P84. P84. Watch. When I go here... Look at the circuit. So if I put two meter leads on those two terminals, I can check the motor and all the other components in that circuit. And if I get a reading, I know they're good. What didn't I check? The, the door switch. Can I check the door switch from the board? Mm -hmm. Where would I do that? You can check PA4 and PA3. PA4. And PA3. Look, that's just checking the door switch right from the computer board. So when you guys are working on these machines, take a minute and say, how can I, can I check anything from the board? Can I check a motor? Can I check the heater? Can I check these components from the control board? Because sometimes where you're working, it's not easy to get to. And if you wanted to check the motor circuit, you'd have to take the whole drum out and everything else to go check the motor directly. So if I can do it from the board, which is on the top of the machine, I can check that circuit. Now, if I don't get a reading, what do I got to do? I got to go down to the part. But if I do get a reading, 
then I can eliminate that and it would be easy right from the top of the machine. So the one thing is though, even though you are right about testing that switch from the board, one thing about this dryer is the dryer is pretty smart. If you go to press start, if this switch is broken or no good, neutral comes into the board here. This is what makes the board work. But neutral also comes in here. When the board does not see that neutral, the board will say door and let you know the door is not closed. And you said, no, the door's closed. Immediately, you know, you might have a problem with your door switch. Only because this machine will tell you that. But this is how you can check it from the board. You can check other components from the board too. Can you check the heating element from the board? Yes. How would you do that? From the relay. I got to see. No, we can, check. we can jump out the relay, yeah. but what if I wanted to ohm test the heating element? Can I put both meter leads on the board and check the resistance value of my heating element? Now, what we do is we look at the element, which is right here, for example, and one side goes to this terminal right here. So you can put a meter lead right here, but how would you check the other? Does this go back to the board at all? No. So you can't ohm out the heater from the board. Only one side of the heating element's on the board. Now, if it has both these heaters, I can put another meter lead here and check this. But if one of them are broken, I'm not going to get a reading at all. And the one thing is, is, if one of those heaters are broken, they come as an assembly, you're going to change the whole thing anyways. But if it's a single heater, you aren't going to be able to test it. You, you have to go all the way down here. You can't go to the power supply because the only way you're going to ohm out the heater is if this switch is closed. And when does that switch close? When does that switch in the motor close? When the motor's running. So you can't ohm the heating element out from the control board. You can ohm out the motor, you can ohm out the door switch, you can check the thermal fuse and belt switch. You won't identify which one of these three have failed if you're doing this test. But then if you've got no reading here, you know it's one of these three. Now you're going to have to take the machine apart. But you already have an idea where to go to troubleshoot. How do I check things to make life easy? If I could check most components from the board here and here, here and here, here and here, I'm good. Now remember, I said we could check the motor, we can check the door switch, we can check things from the board. But when we're troubleshooting, we don't check everything. We just got to find out, do I have a problem where the motor's not working or the motor is working, but the heating element's not working? Because then I got to break it down by that circuit and only troubleshoot that circuit, not the whole machine. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You guys have any questions on this at all? Because tomorrow we're going to we're gonna take this machine and we're going to start doing some of these tests from the board so you can actually see it on the machine. And we're going to jump out some of these relays and say, okay, how do I jump it? How do I do it safely? Because when you're jumping things out, I have guys that jump things out. I had one guy, a great, great kid, that a resistor on the circuit board, like one of these little resistors on the board went bad. So he soldered a wire on the board bypassing the resistor. You think that's going to work? Mm -hmm. A resistor has resistance. A wire don't. The resistor's bad. One, maybe something else on the board damaged that resistor. And two, a resistor's supposed to have resistance value. A wire doesn't have a resistance value. So you can't jump it out. Why he did that? I don't know. Even the time it would take to do that would be worthless. But, you know, it is something that did. Okay. I, so since I came to this class, I've heard them talking about jumping out, and I've heard them, I've seen them take the wire stuff, but I don't understand what that is exactly. Well, we're going to do it tomorrow on the dryer. Okay. But let, let me just try to explain it one more time. You tell me if this helps, okay? Um, so... Power comes in here. Power comes in here on line one, goes through this relay through the heating element, and here.
Now remember, we said a relay is nothing more than just, just a switch, right? Mm -hmm. And there's two wires here. If that switch does not close, does power go to my heating element? No. No. So if I had a piece of wire, just a piece of wire, strip the insulation off the ends, and I put the piece of wire um, uh, connected to this wire, and connect the other one to that wire, what would happen? It would close. Well, if I, if I put this here, now power is going to go through to the element. And that's what jumping is. It's like the switch is supposed to send power. I don't think the switch is working, but if I take a piece of wire and put it in place of the switch and connect it just to these two here, I'm not going through the relay now. I'm bypassing the relay and just sending power to the rest of the circuit. That's what jumping out is. Sometimes it's called a shunt or a bypass or jumping it out. That's only to prove if the part is working. Now, with your meter, you can check to see if that switch opens and closes. And we're going to do all these tests tomorrow mm -hmm. so that you can actually see what, what are you talking about. Mm -hmm. But bypassing it or jumping it out is just a way to see, okay, is the rest of this circuit functioning and the heater working when I put a jumper on here? Because believe it or not, on these whirlpools, one of the most common things that fail on these Whirlpool dryers is the heater relay goes bad. And customer calls us and says, my dryer's run is not getting hot. First thing you do is you check power in the wall. Yeah, do I have 240? Yes, I do. Okay, is this relay working? That's the very next thing I'm going to look at. Yeah, it could be a fuse or a thermostat. We got a thermal cutoff here. There are, there are other things that we could have failed. But the board is one of the most common things that fail on this machine, on this type of dryer. And we're going to talk about how to test from that board tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Any questions, guys? No, so tomorrow we're going to do the hands-on on the dryer? Yep. Okay, so I'm going to leave the board off.